This is a video introduction of XOM or XREF Object Manager, which is an app designed for AutoCAD. When XOM is installed properly in AutoCAD, under the ribbons add ins, there will be a new panel labeled XOM to launch the app. Currently, I have in AutoCAD the layer palette, the external reference palette, as well as the properties palette displayed just as part of this demonstration but not required for XOM to operate successfully. I'm currently in this drawing which is in layout tab called this with a viewport. And let me select the viewport to demonstrate that currently the display is locked in this viewport. Now I'm going to go inside the viewport and begin the XOM app demonstration. Again, to start the app, I click on the XOM panel and currently displayed in this window is the XOM app with, at the top of the window, uh, a number of buttons under the XREF object operations section. These are all the operations available on the external reference objects that are currently contained in this drawing, which is shown in the main body of this window with a list of all the external references matching again what's shown in the XREF panel. And then on the top of this list is um, whatever object is selected is shown the path of where the XREF comes from. And then if it's successfully located uh, on that path. Then at the, immediately at the bottom of the list are, is basically two items. One is a button that allows you to select any of the uh, on-screen graphics that's in this case in XREF for operation. And then next is this text which shows you how many external reference objects there are currently in this drawing. In this case, there are a total of 13. Finally, at the bottom of the XOM window, are these three buttons. Close will close the app application. Help will bring on the online, or in this case, on screen help uh, for this app. And then the info button, which you've seen earlier. So to begin this demonstration, I'm going to show you how, after selecting one or two of these external reference objects, how these operations work. Beginning with, for example, the show operation. With this external reference object selected, if I click the show button, it will go to the first location where this external reference object is found in this space. In this case, is in the model space uh, inside this, uh, this layout tab. And then I could zoom in and out. I could pan around. Before when I'm done, it says press enter to continue. I'm going to press the enter keys on my mouse. And then the window reappears for additional operations on the next XREF. And in this case, let's say I'm going to go ahead and select uh, this one called Cubicle Stations 8. And uh, notice that the equal path is no longer highlighted. And what that operation does is that if for some reason and uh, the XREF is not named to match with the path of the drawing name, then they'll give you have the option to make them equal. For example, if I select once again the first item, that shows that the drawing path is actually called cubicle stations for that DWG. But the XREF object itself is named cubicle stations 4A. So I could actually make them the same by selecting the equal path button. And it now shows that it successfully named the XREF object to this name which matches with the path drawing name. Click OK. Again, the XOM app is redisplayed for additional operations on the current or the, uh, another selected XREF object. In this case, let's say I'm going to go ahead and uh, repath. This repath means that I'm going to select a different location, a different drawing to select and attach into this current drawing. And notice that it says it successfully repath the object 
cubicle stations for to this path office small dot dwg and then also renames the x object to match now notice that there's a copy one and I'll show you why because there is an already an office small xref object in this drawing so when it repathed it to the same path it will create a new xref object and I'll show you how this uh, very nicely works in a little bit but let's say that now I don't like this copy one let me go ahead and rename it by clicking on the rename button I could rename that and call office small version a click OK once I've renamed it it again shows up in the app now with this new name now I'm gonna try and trick it by clicking rename again and I'm gonna use some characters like comma notice that right away it says that this is an invalid character that I added because AutoCAD does not allow you to have a comma or any of these other characters in an, a block name which in this case is an XREF block name so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and I'm gonna go ahead and add the add symbol let's see if it likes that voila it loves the add symbol apparently and let's see what other symbols it likes let's try the pound symbol see if it likes that it loves that as well so there's a number of symbols that it will take in the AutoCAD block name and there are symbols that will not so just to be careful about those symbols that will not take and this will warn you as to which ones will not do so let's say I'm, I'm really done with this I'm going to delete this particular XREF object from this drawing okay select the delete button it's gone so that particular object is removed from the drawing database I'm going to go ahead and repeat that one more time by doing a copy I'll make a copy of that object and now again I have two before I did a repath that happens to have an object that's a reference object that's already in this drawing and then it called the copy one now I made a copy of the xref object and actually made another duplicate and you could see it again here at the reference palette there are now two separate objects that's our references relaying back to the exact same drawing office small dot dwg office small dot dwg but there are two separate instances and again I'll show you the importance of being able to have that and how to use that in your drawings in a little bit but let me continue on by uh, this demonstration of what happens here with this additional new instance and notice that the show is no longer uh, allowable allowed for me to select and the reason why is that there is no location where this is this new object is positioned in, in this drawing yet again I'm going to delete that and then demonstrate how that copy button can be used very effectively for example in my floor plan sample um, let's say I don't know what that is I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I I want to use this one to make operations on which I know is a floor plan sample and voila, <laughs> there it is so I could use the button to select the XREF object or again select it from the list and in this case I'm gonna go ahead and do the operations I've already shown and demonstrate it and I'll do them again I'm gonna rename this floor plan sample and I'll call this construction plan and I'll just put proceed that with a, a one dash so that it sorts on top okay and I'll show you how, how why that's important in a little bit and again I'm gonna click on the show button to show and it'll show me exactly where it is in the drawing I'll just jump to it and then I'm gonna press enter and now the layer palette updates so I could see all the the layers for this reference object now listed on top. Now I'm going to make a copy of a, basically a duplicate of this XREF object. And notice that it didn't call it one dash construction plan because it went back to the original name, which is the original path called floor plan sample.dwg, and then renamed the XREF to match with that name and again I, I really don't want that I want to rename that 
And uh, by the way, notice that that also shows up in here, floor plan, on the reference palette. The other one is uh, our, the one construction plan that we named initially is up there. I'm going to call this one 0 dash reflected ceiling plan. Click OK. And again, sorts it at the very top, which is why we named it that way. And notice that on, again, the reference palette, that is now shown as two separate objects. You have an XREF called one dash construction plan, and you have one called zero dash reflected seeking plan, exactly as shown here. Okay, and the number of external reference objects is now at 13. And then I'm going to go ahead and again, I can't click on show because I have not attached it in this drawing. I have not placed it. It's just like a duplicate get object that's sitting on the reference palette. So I'm going to go ahead and use the attach button and place it now into this drawing. Now again it does a it brings back up the attach external reference window which AutoCAD is a built-in AutoCAD window and I'm going to go ahead and specify the insertion point but I'll leave everything else alone. You know the scale, the rotation, I'll just leave that as is. Click OK. And notice that now I could, you know, if I zoom in and out, and notice I'm because I'm in the locked viewport, I'm really not moving around inside the viewport. But I can now position this here in that location. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way so we can see this. Okay. And now I have two objects. Now to demonstrate how that actually shows up in a separate set of layers, I'm going to click on Show. And again, I'm inside a locked viewport, but I'm able to zoom in and out now because I'm in the middle of the XOM app, as well as see how the layer palette now shows this new external reference object is a separate object with a separate layer set of layers compared to the one dash construction XREF object. Now let's say I'm done zooming in and out, and now I'm going to go ahead and show you why I did this. Sometimes uh, for those who want to have the exact same background to modify a uh, floor plan but show the reflected ceiling plan, they would attach this in now and then uh, gray that out with a color like 8. And now I notice again I have two separate drawings or objects. One is the construction floor plan. The other is the reflect the seeing plan with a separate set of layers and that's the purpose of being able to do that with a copy command and again I'll repeat and bring up notice that location of the XOM app window has now changed to this which is exactly where I left it alright and I'll move it out some more and I'm going to do that one more time I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a copy of the reflect the seeing plan just like I did before of the construction floor plan. And I'll give, again, it'll give me the floor plan sample because this is the original drawing name in the path. It gives it the exact same original uh, XREF object name in this drawing until I rename it, which is what I'm, I'm going to do right now. This time I'm going to call it 00-furniture plan because now I'm going to create a furniture plan. Again, I only have one viewport here that I'm demonstrating how I'm able to do separate copies of the, the an external reference object in the same viewport without doing any kind of VP layer manipulation uh, which is why I want to demonstrate this inside a viewport and not in just in the model tab. Alright so now again uh, now that I have this furniture plan object external reference object I'm going to go ahead and attach that just like I attached the other reflective seeing plan and again I'm going to click OK out of this and I'm going to go ahead and just place it here and now I have three plans uh, again notice that the XOM app window has moved to the location where I la last left it and um, I'm going to go ahead and just to demonstrate that I'm going to show that this is the object that I just referenced in that's called 00, zero. and notice again on the layers palette here's 00, zero. a new object not like the other two. And again, I'm going to enter. And notice that because this is now a third object, I could do my layer freezing without impacting any of the other objects. 
So again, I can zoom in and then let's say I'm going to get rid of these guys just to demonstrate that it can be done. Okay, no, enter. I'm going to go back to where it was. So you notice that none of these other plans have been affected by those layers being turned off in this plan because they're actually three separate objects. Okay. We go back to the XOM. Um, I'm sure you one uh, one neat trick that with the attach button, I'm actually able to attach a new drawing or a new XREF that's not in the current drawing by clicking the uh, built-in. Like this is built-in AutoCAD attach the uh, X uh, attach command that lets you browse to a location or hard drive to select a whole new drawing to attach in from the out outside. Click open and I'm going to attach called XOM Demo A. Alright, and you know you could select all, any of the other XREFs that's already in the drawing to bring in as well but I just to demonstrate that I'm able to select an external one. Click OK. And I'm just going to place this here. And then again, once, notice that it just changed in size. Now I have a total of 54 external reference objects. The XOM app dynamically changes in, in width to accommodate for uh, one of the external references that are in this drawing that perhaps has a very long path like that. And again, because there are 54 external reference objects, the the height of the dialog box grew to accommodate that as well. So this app will accommodate for the uh, number of external reference objects and how long either the name or the path is and it'll widen the dialog box. And again, this is the maximum width and the maximum height before the scroll bars and object is, that gets truncated. And I'm going to go ahead and remove, actually I'm going to delete that. I don't need that anymore again using a delete operation immediately goes back to the this is the minimum size of the XOM app displaying basically 14 external reference objects before it starts to expand vertically and then displaying up to a minimum number of characters horizontally the length of the path or the, or the extra external reference object before it again expands horizontally okay this concludes the XOM app demonstration I hope you enjoyed it.